Welcome to Good Guardian Canine Working Dog. Good Guardian Canine Working Dog, more than just dogs. Welcome back. This is part four of the interview with Manuel Corto Jr., interviewed by Robert from Frontline Pressa. Hopefully you're following along uh, so far. We're up to part four now. Um, it's been quite informative, very informative. Um, historically speaking, this is dealing with a lot of the history and the makeup of the press uh, the temperament of the dog and things like that so hopefully you're enjoying that so far again enjoy your dogs enjoy the videos um, take care of yourselves take care of your families help someone if you can as much as you can and i'll see you in the next video he didn't have the knowledge the puppy when he he was uh, uh, living with um i think that he was uh, maybe a Spanish Mastiff female, and the Spanish Mastiff female that was an adult was kicking the puppy every time for food and everything. When the puppy was, when the dog was one year old, he fighted one time when the owner was not at home, he killed the female. He was a bad dog. No, on the opposite side, he was the best. He was what he asked for. That's the reason why people need to be realistic about what they want, because a lot of people ask for this type of dogs, and if you ask me, about this type of dog, I will get you this type of dog. So he had the problems, he had to remove the dog to other person, we contacted him, and that dog, uh, since he was a puppy, he was living like that, also killed another dog, and it was like that. And that's the reason why I don't have first pick, I don't have waiting list order, we have waiting list because we have a lot of reservation, but the waiting list is under the type of dog that you are asking for. If you are looking for a black family dog, what I will select you is a black family dog and you have to have three persons, three people that are waiting for a black family dog, you are in the waiting list for a black family dog. So the way we work, because if you work with waiting list, the first person in the waiting list will select the first puppy, the second, the second puppy, the third, the third puppy. If you, the litter have six puppies and you have six customers, the number six will keep the last puppy that he don't really want. No, because he only can select in one puppy. This is a recommendation to all customers. If you want a dog, trust your breeder because the breeder is the only one that is there with the puppies, looking at them and he's spending time, of, time, uh, time with them and he knows what you are looking for because to be honest, you don't know what you are looking for. Most of people don't know what they are looking for. That's the reason why I ask so many questions about this. So uh, the question was, remember, the, remember me the, the question? Uh, um, but the, uh, the test that we, we asked about the test. Okay, the test. The test is looking at them, looking at them as much time. Looking at them, you will learn a lot about your dogs and you will make smart decisions. Don't be like a block. No, no, never, never. Because you are looking to do for dogs to compensate. <laughs> it depends on what you need, but that is our test. Looking at them a lot. Obviously, you know the parents, you know the grandparents. This is a great thing when you have your online, that you know your, the parents, the grandparents, you know the temperament and everything. And then in the litter, you see the one that have the quality or the characteristic that you like, like the most. That is the test. Looking at them. A lot of people don't spend time looking at their puppies. Yeah, filming videos with uh, different color colors. Yes, a lot. A lot. A nice photo with a nice camera, but that's not a test. A test is spending time with your dogs, sharing time with them. That's why I say that press, uh, to be a breeder is a full-time job because you need to be a lot of time, not only feeding them and opening the gate, closing the gate. No, it's spending time with them and looking at them. I think that that's the, um, the reason that my father has success with the Presa Canario and the reason why he produces some of the best Presa Canario around the world is his system. Right. So, um, and I think another thing that we see a lot um, with breeders um, all over, and, and I think clarify this because you said you guys produced over 2,000 puppies. Um, when we see breeders saying that the entire litter is a, is a, a you know, a quote-unquote hot dog, 
Uh, I think we can be real here as, you know, you have, you have plenty of experience. You came up on the father with all now. I think we can agree that there's no such thing as a litter where they're all hot. Um, you're never going to have. It. So when people are advertising this, um, that that's something that they're advertising that, that's not possible. I mean, realistically, let's say you have a litter of 10 puppies. You probably have three that are super hot. You might have three that are medium. And then you might have, a you know, three or four that are, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, for, for like a, you know, family, uh, you know, pet, quote unquote, uh, there's no such thing as an entire litter being a hot litter. I think that's a misconception and a selling point that we see a lot of people using. Um, and I think it's read that that's not even something that's possible. <laughs> I think that the people that say that is because they need to sell their dogs. <laughs> because that, that's not possible. It's expected you when you breed you are expecting that all of them have a good character a basic temperament that all of them are good but it's a, as you said you have the big one you have the small one that didn't take an old milk because he get ill at the when he was opening the eyes and everything you have the big you have the small you have the crazy i'm going to say but worse now you have the crazy motherfucker that is always fighting for food fighting for everything fighting with your trousers fighting with everything okay that's is for the trainer that is going to hunt wheel hawks <laughs> that is the perfect one you have um, the very stable mind that is perfect for families that have the perfect combination between a uh, warding uh, characteristic and the physique and everything you have the beautiful one that you see at here and see like damn this dog is very beautiful look at the face look at the mask like the body is perfect always in all leaders when we try to breed homogeneous dogs is to have all these traits the most balanced as possible so all the dogs in a litter have a very similar quality but obviously not all of them could be fire yes they could be work but fire one one or two really fire that you see them this dog is perfect for this only one or two if you say that all your litter is fire man you have a problem with the meaning of fire <laughs> because that's not that's not real it's not realistic it can happen that you have a great litter that all of them have great characteristic and all you can also trade train them and all of them are great but not all of dogs are fire not because what you are what are fire comparing them with what is what i said about the dog canary and the problem that i have with the black dog if they are expecting a very soft dog and everything but this same this case is the same for them all of them that they move the rub the tail and they bark when they want to eat and if you do rah, they start barking that's not fire fire is one or two in the liters right So what, in your opinion, um, because we spoke, you know, over the years, how the Presa Canary and the Coco Canario, um, the standard and, and, the, and the visual look of them was completely different. Um, obviously, one favored the, the Mastiff look and the other one was a little bit more in shape and thinner. Um, what is the, what would you say, just so the people that are on the live can understand and get an idea, because I see the question come up a couple of times. As far as the Presa Canario male and the female go, what is an ideal uh, size, like in weight-wise? Like, for example, uh, you know, I've always said, that, you know, I, I like a male to be, you know, 115, 120 pounds. Uh, some people like it 150 pounds. But I feel 150 pounds is a little bit too big for, for my preference and what I like. Um, but I, I feel like 115 to 105 males and, you know, anywhere from 90 to 100. 15 on the females is also good as well so just so you can kind of shed some light on that what, what is the ideal size so they have an understanding okay understand when we say ideal we have to remember that the standard is a description of the ideal dog a great thing that we have in the presa canario we have a big separation between the smallest weight and the lightest weight and the biggest one the smallest is in the males 45 kilos and the maximum is 57 kilos 
we don't need to go to the extremes. For example, now we have Adan, Aníbal, and all those dogs, they are in the limit. They are 56, 57 kilos, because this is what we are needing now with the females that we have. But I think, to be, to be fast, 55 kilos. A 55 kilos males, damn, perfect. I, we have Fausto. Fausto is like super classy, a lot, uh, lot of rusticity, the Majorero look in, you know, in the eyes that you see him, that he's like a wolf, something, uh, yes, uh, something that is not domesticated. I will explain the Majorero like that. They have that traits in the eyes. 55 kilos for a male and 48 kilos for a female because we have dimos dimorphism in males and females. And also you talk about the differentiation between uh, the presa canary and dog canary, and this is a funny fact that not too much people uh, have thinking about it. That so, dog... Pause one second. So just so they know, 55 kilos transfers to about 120, uh, 121 pounds. So 55 kilos is 125 pounds, uh, 121 pounds. And for the females, uh, 45 kilos is 99 pounds. Okay, yes, I don't know in, in, in pounds, but in kilos is like, like that. 55 kilos dog is perfect. And about the standard from the dog canario, this is a funny fact, but also the dog canario didn't respect it, his own standard, because the only difference that are between the presa canario standard and the dog canario standard was for. The first one, the history, the first thing that I told about the life, about the origin of the Majorero, that's the reason why it's not uh, the good one, because it's something important. If you don't know the history of a bread, you are lost. The second one is the type of bite. Since they have a lot of bull mastiff and they had a lot of English bulldog, usually bull mastiff and English bulldog have prognatism or, or bite. They are like, like that. So that's the reason why they accepted that because most of, our, of their dogs were like that. So they were changing the standard at the same time to make it look like their dogs they have. If the dog is bigger, let's change the standard. If they all have overbite, let's just, imagine they could say, okay, or all our dogs have dysplasia, okay, dysplasia is accepted. It's accepted because in none of their shows, they ask it for, for hip dysplasia test. That is the reason why we say that shows are not relevant because in shows they are not asking for anything and also that the Dogo Canario don't fit in his own standard because the difference is the history, the overbite, the coat that they, they don't have white, eto, eh, sorry, eh, black, and the difference, other difference, the size. The size, the only difference is that the maximum is 65 kilos. That, that's a monster. The rest of the standard is the same. Okay, so if the rest of the standard is the same, what we were expecting is like a Presa Canario, some of them with overbite, perfect uh, uh, phenotype of a Presa Canario, but bigger. That happened? No, because the dog Canario that we have seen, the, let me use Nestor here. I have a lot of books. <laughs> Okay, we have Nestor here. Let's take in mind this as the perfect presa. Okay, let's take this because this Nestor was used as the standard dog to take the sizes and the description and everything. Dog and this this is the way a presa canario should look like this. Okay, the dog canario is like that: short arms, long length. Uh, this this part of the back like like that, and this. Going down, I told at first that it need be only one or two centimeters. So is and this is the the top, the cross, and this is the back. So it's a it's a little bit going down like a lion, like a tiger, and that's the way why Presa Canario walks like a lion. And you see him, it's like oh my god, it's not like a pitbull that or a boxer that is going up. That he looks more more no, it's like a lion. Dog canary is an exaggeration of that. They go to the extreme down and you see his very short legs with, uh, without angulations. It's like something straight and all that. And that's not what the dog canary standard explains. So they were judging a, a dog that is like 
It's not the same dog as the standard describes. They could make a, a new standard of the dog canario. They don't exist anymore, but they can make a standard of the dog canario, and it will be very different because most of the dog canarios were very similar. They were very homogeneous because they made a great line breeding. Why? Because they were selecting the champion lines. Champion, because I don't know what they are looking for. <laughs> so uh, they are champion of what? But they were very homogeneous. If they took a uh, rule and everything and made a new standard, that could be the new standard of dog canario. But the presa canario, the dog canario standard, the real dog that they had were not similar. So when they say beauty champion, beauty of what? If the standard is the ideal and your dog is all the opposite. They have a lot of stock from the bull mastiff and the English mastiff without zygomatic cards. So you see this like that, long leaves, like very crazy long leaves, a very uh, a slight muscle, like very, very short. The short, no, very, yes, not too wide. It's like, like very, like a mastiff, any mastiff. And the Presa Canario might have a wide muscle with great teeth insertion, short leaves, but uh, wide leaves. Not the small that you see like a Great Dane that they do, that, you know, no. Because all of these have a function. When I see, say, a strong teeth with the, all the teeth, the premolar, the molars and everything wide to catch, if the dog doesn't have a great insertion, he can take a wheelboard, the wheelboard will move, he lose his teeth. The reason why he needs the zygomatic arch, because the zygomatic arch is a bone, and uh, on the bone there is a muscle. The muscle, when you press the same with the muscle curve, the same with the temporal muscles, all of that is made to make pressa, because we have to remember that pressa means prey. If a pressa don't do prey because his phenotype is not be able, is not able to do it. He is not present. That's why the head is very, very, very important. And this is what I have to say. The funny thing about the dog canario is that the real dog canarios were not similar to their standards because the presa can, dog canary standard is very, very similar to the presa canary standard. That's the thing. Um, so one of the questions came in. It says. Um... Who was your father's, one of your father's mentors? Did, did he have any mentors in the breed or was it? Yeah. My father is a great reader. He is a person that likes to be alone. He's always working, working 24 seven. He's writing a new book now about the Majorero because he finished the 1999 edition that he do some corrections. That is the one that some people purchased some two years ago. We had a lot of problems trying to publish this book. My father decided to uh, to complete it. And then uh, now we are going to publish it with a new, a new publisher here from the Canary Islands, from Canary Things. He's always working, he's always reading. So he, I think that he had two mentors in general terms. The first one, the books. My father all, is always reading. He don't like to ask. He preferred to read and to go straight to the information, he's autodidact, so he learned himself. He has read a lot of German shepherds because German in Germany, there is the best selections. The best selection is in Germany. They have the two type of pedigrees, the red one and the white one. The white one is the one that didn't approve it yet any type of working test. And then the red, the red one, I'm not too much from the German Shepherd, this one my father explained it. And then the red one, that the dog is full tested and everything. And he took that way of working. And when you are breathing, and uh, more my father that is creating something, you need to be very honest with what you have. You do tests, you take decisions. So he have learning the books, then practicing, and then his other mentor, was those old people that used to fight in the beginnings of the of the 20th century. Because my father is 77. He has met them when they were old. Uh, and he has learned them from them. Something like the thing of taking the ear and everything. He took that from Polo Acosta because people in that time do it. Because this reason from Demetrio Trujillo, from Panchito Saavedra, from old fighters. So we can say three mentors. Books, 
old fighters and uh, self um, crying, crying and crying. That's are his mentors. Uh, yes, that's the reply for this. Those are my, my father mentors. Now, Presa Canario community have it easier because the Presa Canario is already created. They only have to go to Presarbe. They can see the full information. This thing that I was talking about, the history of the Presa Canaria in a timeline, they can see there. Because I think that most of the confusion, of the confusion in the Presa Canario community is about historic things. Depending on with what person did you learn your first thing about the Presa Canario, and how old are you, you will think different things because you have different information because you didn't have access to that. Now it's possible. Now you can uh, read my father's book, the 1991, that is the good one. Not this one. This is good, but it's only the text. Here you can see shitty images like a blue dog and everything, but the good one is this one, that is the 1999 edition. That is a timeline about all the things that happened during the creation of the Presa Canaria. So this is the good one to understand the Presa Canaria. And this is free, 100% free, online in Press Arby. Uh, it was the reason, because it was like too much information on the line, too much photos of different uh, times, a lot of different standards, different information from different people. I decided to say, okay, we need a place we, we can put all this information and all these people that is in the chat, if they want to learn about the Presa Canario 100%, everything, they can go to Press Arbe. And that will be your mentor. The so, information. Um, real quick, we'll, we'll deal with this one question and we'll go back to that. So um, that way we can finish the video with that. You educating the people and let them know about the, uh, the uh, website you created. Um, so this question here is, what was your... Uh, favorite F1 cross that'll that y'all used if you can remember. I guess I guess we can say what was the most influential in your um, uh, in your kennel. What was the most influential cross that your father has done? You know, back in the day. Majorero, Rocky, that that Majorero. He was a, he was terrible. Um, most of the when you see Irema Curto from the 90s and the 2000s, you know that this an Irema Curto because she have an special aesthetic. The reason of that is the Majorero. Everybody knows that. So I think that the most important cross and what it make it Presa Canario is the Majorero. So I can say Rocky and other Majoreros that my father used it at the beginning. Because we have to remember that this was 30 years ago. Nowadays, you can't find a Majorero like 30 years ago. It's impossible. They are just pets now. It's just the looking, but it's not the temperament. They, they are terrible. It's not for a beginner. The Majorero is terrible. It's not for a beginner for sure. That's the reason why Presa Canario was designed. Because if it's only Majorero, the real Majorero, no. Because that's the reason why now Majoreros are just pets. Because if normal people that are not go after the people that have the livestock and everything, if normal people have a Majorero, they could not be having a normal life because they need these special things. It's like they don't like nobody, only the owner. It's like Presa Canario is like um, the Majorero temperament. Presa Canario needs to be to have the Majorero temperament. But the Majorero is in another level. Zero socialization. Two times in my life, Majoreros bite me. Presa Canario never. When I was a kid. Polo and Tarajal, both, both bite me when I was a kid. They, they are dangerous, the real one, the good one. So Majorero, Majorero was the most important. Okay, so uh, just one more question, and then I want you to go into, I, I pinned your uh, website down the bottom, all the work that you have been uh, creating the website and putting everything together. So I want to get one more question in. You can be brief with your answer. So that way we have, you know, we have about 15 minutes left on this live so we can, we can talk about your website. So real quick, um, the, we, we've had this discussion plenty of times, you and I, uh, about the heavy white. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> so, so, you know, the thing is with the white um, in the U.S., it seems like it's gaining some popularity. Uh, we have more breeders that are, you know, producing more and more white. Um, you know, we, we had the discussion the other day stating that you know just because it has more white that doesn't make it less of a working dog uh it's still if as long as it has the capabilities and the function you know some people are okay with it uh, let's just get your opinion on the white and you know, 
like I said, it's gaining more popularity over here. Um, but what, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. First, we need to know the origin of the white. White comes from the Stafford and from the English Bulldog. Okay, it's the pattern, it's the origin of the code. Okay, when we talk about Presa Canario, Presa Canario is something very specific. And its description is the 1989 standard. Since that moment, Presa Canario has a standard, you need to respect it if you want to use the Presa Canario name. Because we have to remember that previous crosses were only Presa Dog. A lot of people is saying that since the dog canario didn't have white and didn't have black, uh, the old presa canario was white. But we have to remember something. The 1899 standard have been there since 30 years ago. 30 years breeding without the, the white. Because when you are breeding the ideal dog, you are looking for the perfect dog that fits in the standard and the maximum is 30% white. Why now, 30 years later, we see all these dogs with all those white spots when it's supposed that here in the Canary Islands we have been breeding without the white all these years? What's the origin of those dogs? Because there's no something about functional. Yes, of course, most of them have a great looking, most of them work and everything. But we, think, we need to think that we are breeding Presa Canario with a very specific standard. We know the origin of those dogs because, yes, of course, we can see their genealogy in Presa database that is public, that anybody can edit that. We can see the origin. But those dogs are really with those origins. Why 30 years later, later we still see that, that type of dog? That's the thing. Now it's something artificial. As you said, it's a trend. Like it was a trend, the black coat, when Carpat Camp produces Cerberus. Yes, of course, Irema Curto was the first one with black, and we are known because the black, because, but we have to be honest, Cerberus from Carpat Khan, you can like him less or more, but he was the one that appeared in all the memes on the internet, that everybody wanted a dog like Cerberus, and a lot of people is now breathing black because Cerberus, okay? The same happening with the white. Now people say that white is the trend. I think that his name in Jose is Panda. Here is Mancho Blanco. <laughs> the traditional name is Mancho Blanco, white spotted. Panda is something new. I, I think that is more a commercial name, but it's something artificial because you, you have to try to breed under the traditional standard. If you don't have heavy white, no problem. That's not the problem. I was uh, talking about this with several kennels from the UK that he produces dogs with heavy white and those dogs can work and everything. And he was right talking about this, that the problem is not the white. The problem is what you are focusing in. If you are focusing in producing more white for selling, okay, you're grown, totally grown. If you have white, no problem, man. This, that's not a problem. You just need to produce dog that don't have that amount of white. Because if not, you're not respecting the standard. And if you want to create a new breed, call it American Presa or something like that. But Presa Canary is something very specific with a very specific uh, description. Just imagine uh, a ball, a football ball. The description as a football ball is a, a very thing that football players used to play. If it's a square, it's not a ball anymore. This is the same, but this is the most basic description. A Ferrari, a Ferrari have a very specific description. It has this logotype, it has these features, this, this engine, this everything, that's a Ferrari. When you start changing things and everything, it's not a Ferrari anymore. So that's the reason why a Ferrari is a Ferrari and a Volkswagen Polo is not a Ferrari. Yes, both of them, you can drive them. Both of them have engine, but they are different. Why they are different? Because they have different specifications. This is the same. If we start breeding white, uh, white Presa Canarios, and some people say that, no, standard needs to be modified to include the white code because all dogs have, from 40, 30, and 100 years ago, have the black. There will be no difference between other breeds because, for example, the Bull Mastiff, the Cane Corso, the Boer Boel are breeds that are very, very similar to the Presa Canario. 
if they don't respect their standards, there will be a time that all of them will be very, very similar. So you will not notice the difference. So when you're getting a dog, a family is purchasing a new dog, they are expecting something. They are expecting a specific pattern, a specific color, a specific size with a specific temperament and everything. The same as the presa canario have to have obligatory a, a good warding temperament, the interior and the exterior, everything is important. Presa canario is everything. It's the complete meaning of everything. So what I have to say about uh, white presa, yes, they can exist, but they must not be, uh, the breeders must not be, must not breed to produce more white. They need to correct that. And if you are not able, because there are a lot of dogs in the world, I and mean, if you say pff, lot of dogs of presa canarios, if you are not uh, good enough to fix that very easy to fix problem that is the white because you have to respect it standard. Just don't breed, don't lie to the people. You know clearly what is a presa canario if you know it, but because they are a lot of breeders that think that the standard is something just for the shows and is something that don't exist. No, the standard is a document with a specific specification, a description. Just respect the standard, you have why no problem but try to fix that. <laughs> That's my reply. Right. Um, so we have seven minutes left and um, we can talk about your uh, your website. I'm actually on it right here on my laptop, checking it out. Um, now, if you want, we can save this live. If you want to if you want to go longer, we can go longer and start another one. It's up to you. If you want to wrap it up now and finish out the uh, last couple of minutes, we can do that, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I can continue. And then if this stops, uh, we can... And make a new one in seven minutes to tell me. All right, so let's do this. I have uh, like four minutes left, so let's just stop this one. I'll save it, and then we'll get back on. Okay, perfect. All right.